I have been inspired by another YouTuber called The Magic Man Sam. He does video essays on the topic of Magic the Gathering art, the context, the composition, and the background of the pieces. The respect he shows for an often underappreciated element of the game is fantastic, and I'm truly inspired to engage with the game on a level I otherwise never would have thought to do as a creative. For that reason, I'm going to draw a card as much detail as I can through Microsoft Paint. So welcome to Magic the Gathering Art Appreciation with your host, Peasant Kenobi. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm basically the Magic the Gathering content creating equivalent of a giant enemy crab. So here's this giant enemy crab. This is going to be a bit like Bob Ross, but more pixelated and just as beardy though. So welcome to the joy of painting magic cards. For this first attempt at the series, I'm going to leave the card in question a mystery to allow you all to play along at home in guessing what it is. I will refrain from asking in an Australian accent on a regular basis. Can you tell what it is yet? Uh, no. I will keep the Wolf House jokes to a minimum, guys. So without further didgeridoo, let's begin. So I'm attempting a new content style with this, where I'm going to actually just talk live and ad lib over the drawing without too much of a script. So what I might do is use these videos as a way of uh, talking about topics that I wouldn't really talk about on my channel much, like I don't know, Blade Runner for example, or, or how hard Cuphead is, or current affairs, you know, like the Trump v Korea sort of grudge match that's going on over on Twitter at the moment. As you can see, I am quite good when it comes to paint. I have quite good actual paint qualifications and uh, art qualifications. I played a lot of Mario Paint as a kid, actually. I loved it. That fly spotting game was the boss. So as you can see here, my second attempt at a hand was a lot better than the first. Um, the first one looks more like a cat's paw. The second one looks like a bag of sausages. So this is actually time-lapsed as well, that's a good point, so I did not actually draw this fast. It took me a good 40 minutes to create this masterpiece, uh, where in reality this is only going to take us about 10 to watch it back, uh, maybe a little bit longer. I will periodically jump cut bits that just aren't interesting, uh, if any of this is interesting. I don't even know if anyone's going to watch this video, if I'm honest with you. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the kind of content that people subscribe for. But I do want to try doing different things now and again. I don't want to do the same sort of gameplay over and over. That's how you get stagnant and complacent on YouTube. So Blade Runner was really, really, really good. Like, I really like the original Blade Runner. It's one of my favourite movies. Um, I don't think people who haven't seen the original would enjoy this that much, because it very much is a, a sequel to the original movie, in the sense that the director and, and, and production and, and writing is trying its hardest to emulate the original Blade Runner by being quite slow going. Um, one of the biggest criticisms of the old Blade Runner movie is that it's just very glacial in pace, and this one is the same, clocking it over two hours. Ryan Gosling is... Super broody in it, but he's pretty good at being broody. If you've ever seen Drive or Only God Forgives and, and Plays Beyond the Pines, that's kind of his default mode, is just to be a brooding sex pot, and he does that really well. The action sequences that are in there are actually really solid and fun. Like, Batista is just good at beating shit, isn't he? And fucking punching stuff and things. So, yeah, he's great in it, and, and um, the, the set pieces are good. Even though they're few and far between, the film does try to focus on being a Blade Runner movie as opposed to being an action flick, so that's pretty cool. As you can see here, the eyebrows look a bit like Sonic the Hedgehog after a really rough night out. I'm trying to utilise all the tools of my availability here to create a textured image, but um, after all, it is MS Paint. And I, I bloody hate that when you fucking colour something in and it colours the rest of it in because you fuck the lines up. It just makes me really mad. Um, so yeah, other than pacing, Blade Runner was really solid. There was a few bits that I, my suspension of disbelief was broken somewhat. Um, minor, minor spoilers coming up. Minor spoilers. So um, the, the hologram girl that the main character sort of has knocking about, um, she's called Joy, J-O-I. Uh, for those of you in the know, um, that is sort of like a, also a genre of pornography, as far as I understand it. Give it a Google. I think it's Jerk Off Instruction. So it's kind of like a, an AMSR thing where... They, they talk to you in a sexy way and encourage you to, I don't know, spank your monkey in particular ways. Um, yeah, so that, when I saw that, I was like, is that a direct illusion? Because this is like a love interest almost. And the other thing is that, like a, like a fucking sweatshop, a Chinese, like, factory fe sweatshop is, um... I don't know why I said it was Chinese, because the guy actually running it isn't Chinese, so someone's probably, probably going to call me racist in the comments. But I meant it feels like the typical joke about Chinese uh, sweatshops you'll get. I won't go into that anymore, because I sound like I'm rambling, and also will probably get accused of being racist. Anyway, this sweatshop that's using child labour to um, as a workforce seems to have in-depth, long-term records about 
its workforce, where the children have gone, and when it sells them and things. I just didn't think an illegal operation like that would have to keep those kind of records. But and I was just sat there, I was shaking my head, like, what the fuck? What? What? It's, it's a plot convenience that they had them, but yeah. Dumb. So yeah, I really like the movie. There's some criticism around the female characters in it, which I can completely see. Like, there's basically three main female characters. Um, I won't go into really big spoilers about about the movie actually. So, um, but the, the yeah, but the three main characters in this movie, they um, they fulfil the three sort of niches. You've got like um, the the slut. The, the 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 girlfriend and the the mother sort of like archetypes that you'd expect. I, I guess actually there's there's the other replicant love. I guess she's more in power, but she's also like basically the Terminator. So yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if I agree that the film is like negative towards women, but it, it doesn't exactly create any empowering narrative. But then again, it is very much a product of its of its origin, which is Blade Runner, and that film had that rapey saxophone bit in it. So you know, what can you do? Basically, I give the I would give Blade Runner a good thumbs up. Go see it. I really enjoyed it. I'm not in a mad hurry to go see it again uh, right now. I'm not going to go see it in IMAX like I was thinking I might do if I really loved it because um, it's just it's just the pace. It's so long, and I I did feel like they could have. The film gives a lot of time for it to breathe, like vi visually, um, which narratively isn't great. It's not efficient in its storytelling. So yeah, that's Blade Runner. That's Blade Runner in a nutshell, really. So I'm assuming at this point, you guys must have guessed what this is. Um, some bits to talk about, actually, about the art of this car, without saying the name of it yet. Is that the that bit I just drew in the background, the little sort of pipe bit behind the two characters? It looks a bit like a finger in the original art, like a giant golden finger. It's kind of weird. And then I've never noticed that the guy on the right has a giant, like, novelty ear that he's using to listen to the advice of his, um, of his confidant on the left. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a part of the art that I'd never seen before before looking in. A bit like the baby that you get in Master of Ethereum, and the fact that Single Pest isn't a giant chicken. Uh, things I've pointed out on the channel before. So I, I really like that. That the magic art is so. Oh, you can see me flicking through music trying to find something I really want to listen to. Um, yeah, I really like that magic art that you can find little nuances that you just don't see because the cards are so small originally. Here you, you can see me struggling with the paint full tool. Fill, 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 fill. The fill tool because I have drawn really wonky lines. Um, so now we come to the bit where I start to really texture the image up with some full thick colours for the background. The background I've actually done in a little bit less detail than the, than the original art but that's because you know I can't spend too long on this so I don't even know if people are going to fucking watch this. But um, yeah I start in a moment you'll see I start yeah here we go we get some sprays on to create some sort of lighting on the on the edges of the guys and yeah I'm really proud of this I think you know I, I could have a career in art as you can see I mean the smoke coming out of that that sort of incense holder on the left is pretty pretty solid as you can see it's pretty strong. Um, it looks definitely like smoke. I mean, if you squinted your eyes, you'd be hard pressed to imagine that this is actually a picture on MS Paint when you look at that smoke. Also, the incense holder on the top left that you just saw as well, and we'll go back to it in a moment, uh, looks like a sort of like one of those Coke glasses, you know, the retro Coke glasses that they often um, give you as part of a promotion with the. Sorry, my dog's licking my bag. Bruce, stop licking the bag, mate. Alright? You can lick your pillow, you can lick your claws, you can lick. My feet. I don't really want you to look at my feet, but you can look at other things that aren't my bag. Bloody dogs. So here we are, we're golding it up. It no longer looks like a Coke glass now, um, because it, it's gold. And you don't get those in gold, obviously. Um, so yeah. I think I, um, in a moment, you'll see that I really capture the essence of, um, of, uh, is it, who, who, who was Doc Confident the Invitational for? I should probably look that up. Probably hear me typing now, guys. Dark confidant invitational. Uh, just, just clicking away. Sorry, guys. I, I should have probably figured this out before I started uh, recording this. Bob Mayer. That's it. That's why he's called Bob. Duh. Fucking hell, Vince. You're so fucking stupid. Yeah, Bob Mayer Jr. is an American former professional player. He's a Pro Tour winner, a Masters winner, and three Grand Prix winner. In addition, he won the 2004 Magic Invitation that let him design the card Dark Confidant. In 2006, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I guess I have ruined it here, but you have had like 10 minutes to guess what the card was while I was rambling about Blade Runner and the fact that I liked it and stuff. I was thinking of doing a full video where I actually wrote down my thoughts of Blade Runner instead of just saying them out loud. 
and did an actual vlog about Blade Runner to tell you guys how much I liked it, but I just don't know if the audience cares enough, so I thought I'd just slide it in here under my new art appreciation series. I bought Cuphead recently, to just go on a complete tangent, that game's pretty hard. Um, not too, not like lame hard, not like it's, um, you know, going out of its way to be cheesy hard. It's not uh, unfair. It's completely fair. You have to learn patterns and get good, basically. And I like it a lot. Um, obviously, I don't want to go about the art style, because that seems like every man and his dog can point out that the art style is nice. I mean, that's fucking obvious, really. But yeah, the, is, the actual quality of the animation is the bit that amazes me. I mean, yeah, the aesthetic is unique and interesting, because you don't really get that in that genre or in video games in general. But the fact that it looks like a moving cartoon while you're playing it is really impressive. So um, props to the animators and the people that actually did the art. Uh, the, the sprites and things. Um, here you can see I decided to actually go back and do a bit more of an artsy-fartsy uh, pattern on his chest, as you're about to see, using some of the uh, unique tools added to the, the newer versions of paint. I don't even know we had paint tools this good in paint, so uh, yeah, there you go, I'm getting my watercolour on. Uh, you know, I got, a, I got a B in graphics at A-level, no A-level, at GCSE, so that's definitely coming out here with my ability to utilise digital paintbrushes. In addition to Carphead, I also bought SNES Mini and Golf Story as well on the Switch. Um, all of which I'm playing a little bit of here and there, but I'm really bad at not committing to finishing a game, so I don't really finish many games unless I'm rushing to like, review them or anything. Um, golf Story is really fun. It feels like Earthbound meets sort of um, Sim Golf, Mario Golf sort of um, style of golf, so that's actually really fun and relaxing to play. Where Cuphead, I can't play for more than an hour at a time without feeling immensely stressed and getting a bit of a headache. Just maybe because of the repetitive visuals as well, we have to play a boss 16 times to kill it. Uh, the says Mini is cool. I haven't played Star Fox 2 because a uh, controversial opinion is I don't really like Star Fox very much. Um, but I've been playing a bit of Earthbound, which is weirdly reminiscent of um, Golf Story. And uh, playing, obviously, Super Mario World, one of my favourite games ever. Uh, I'm playing Contra 3 in its original form, not the weird mechanised dinosaur form that apparently we got in Europe that I remember as a kid. Um, no Mario Paint though, which is a shame, but they would have had to give you a mouse with it as well. But yeah, we're going to get my fly sweat on. I'm surprised there's not more buzz about Earthbound actually after the Sesmini coming out, because as far as I understand it, I'd have to check this up, I don't think Earthbound was ever released in the UK, other than on virtual consoles and stuff, so I'm surprised, you know, the the, the basic bitches uh, that you've got on Instagram, you've gone and bought their uh, Sesmini and talked about how much of a nerd they are, um, <laughs> I'm surprised they aren't going about how great Earthbound is, because especially with the fact that it sort of feels a lot like um, uh, It and Stranger Things, in the sense that you are like young protagonists going out on a an adventure in like a sub American suburbia, so yeah, I'm really surprised that people aren't going on about Earthbound more with the release of this, you know, giving us another version of it to be played by the masses. Um, as you can see here, I'm actually um, quite a good makeup artist. I might see if Steph will let me do a makeup tutorial on her face on the channel sometime, because um, look at those smoky fucking eyes. I, I think they are beautiful. Really well done, some might say. My dog just snorted, because he probably thinks I'm a fucking idiot for A, talking to myself, because he probably doesn't understand how microphones work. He's just a dog after all. And B, how bad that makeup is. So, as you can see, I deleted the original face to go in with a new face. I don't know if you guys think the original face was better. You can let me know in the comment section below whether you think I should have done that. Also, I have um, given myself a limitation on this challenge, or... or, or um, I ch yeah, ch I'm just going to say a challenge. It's an art challenge to recreate... Bob. Uh, but yeah, the, the limitation is that I can't mix or create any other colours. I'm using the default palette. I might change that if I do another one, but um, yeah, at the moment, that's what I'm doing. I'm using the default colours. That's why Bob looks like he is a sunburned, with that disgusting colour of pink for his skin. Obviously, with the multiculturalism and the magic that I'm, I'm, I'm quite fond of as well, not, that's not criticism, I actually think it's good. I don't know if the default uh, paint palette will actually allow me to um, draw people of colour. So I probably need to, yeah, mix some colours up and stuff to actually do varied art and things. I was actually on and on about redoing the hand here, but I just thought, you know, fuck it. We got to the point where I was like 40 minutes in, I couldn't be bothered. Um, and then I thought also the big whiteness kind of annoyed me, so I decided to go and colour him in. And there we have it. Oh, there's a curry. There's a curry. No, no curry. There we have it. We have Bob. <coughs> and my dog barking. <coughs> Brucey! My art isn't that bad. Well, I better go see what my dog is doing. But there we have it. There is Bob, drawn on Microsoft Paint. Um, let me know what you think. If you can rate it out of 10 and maybe give me a bit of art criticism. Do you, do you think I kept to the depth of the field of the background well enough? 
or the essence of the painting, the fact that, you know, Bob is a confidant to the to the oars of um, big face people, or whatever the fuck these are from Ravnica. Uh, the ear, I think the ear is the central point in that, because he's listening to the whisperings of this guy. Um, you know, power at any cost, even though it doesn't involve listening to a man who looks like he's been sunburnt from staying out in the sun for too long. Um, if you want me to do another one of these, and you've got a particular card you want me to tackle, then uh, comment that below as well, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been longer than I thought it would be. Um, I've been Pleasant Kenobi, and remember, uh, I should give you some words of wisdom like I normally do, but I'm really underprepared. Uh, remember, uh, when you've got a beard this good, you don't even have to be funny, just people just, just like you because of your beard. Everyone should grow a beard. Thanks for watching.